Hello all, welcome back to the Forensic Ballistic Classes and I am Dr. Bupesh, your online forensic tutor and in previous session we have discussed about what is firearm, the types of firearm, smooth bore and rifled bore firearms and the cartridges for the, means the ammunition for the smooth bore and the rifled bore weapons. Now we are going ahead in the session of Forensic Ballistic about the introduction. Now we will discuss about the firing mechanism and identification of the firearm from the evidences on the crime scene. So let's move ahead. Now let us first understand the firing mechanism. Don't don't get disturbed about reading. Okay, you can read it at home later on. Now what happens actually in firing mechanism? You know, I told you that there is the base of the cartridge. At the base of the cartridge, there is a percussion cap. I'll move to the uh, next slide to show you so at the base of the cartridge there is a percussion cap and within the percussion cap there is a primary charge I told you the cartridge is having the primary charge propellant charge and the casing as well as the projectile so we are talking about the primary charge at the base of the percussion cap which is high explosive and shock sensitive so what actually happens in firing mechanism so there is a firing pin embedded in the action block of the firearm let's say this is the firearm and there is a mechanism when we press the trigger the hammer is released and the hammer hits the firing pin and then the firing pin hits the percussion cap of the firearm where the high explosive primary charge is being kept and the firing is initiated and what happens then this flash which is initiated from the uh, from the primary charge burns the main propellant charge burns the main propellant charge and then what happens the projectile is hurled out or the projectile is propelled out from the firearm so this completes the firing mechanism in some cases in automatic firearms the firing mechanism is automatic means till the extraction of the cartridge or the ejection of the cartridge and reloading of the new cartridge it happens automatically with the help of uh, the spring mechanism and with the help of a magazine there and some firearms are manual firearms means after each firing you need to reload the weapon for the next firing okay so this firing is being done in this way next is what happens I told you about the grooving of the barrel so what happens in rifled bore weapons in rifled bore weapons uh, in rifled bore weapons the grooving provides the spinning motion or gyratory motion to the projectile which keeps it stable during the path or during the flight and increase the effective range of the projectile whereas in a smooth bore weapon there is no grooving inside so there is quite a tumbling of the projectile and the projectile faces more air resistance more air resistance as well as the base drag what is base drag we will talk later um, in the detailed sessions on forensic ballistic so they face more air resistance and more base drag due to the tumbling motion and hence decreasing the velocity and effective range of the firearm so yes of course the rifling or the grooving it's very necessary and it increases the muzzle velocity and then finally the actual velocity of the, uh, the projectile as well okay so next is uh, the basic principle of firearm identification now consider you encountered certain evidences at the crime scene I'll name the evidences you encountered a cartridge case empty cartridge case or we can say fired cartridge case you encountered a projectile which is a bullet let's say and there is a dead body also so we will discuss about the dead body later on but let us go ahead with the cartridge case and the projectile you may have a firearm on the crime scene or you may not have the firearm on the crime scene now let's move ahead you know law of individuality in forensic science no two things in this world can be exactly alike so this is the law of individuality so firearm identification is a kind of tool mark identification where the the parts of the firearm whether it is firing pin whether it is chamber whether it is barrel 
or whatever it is is acting as a tool and creating certain markings on the cartridge case as well as on the projectile means the bullet and these markings are very much specific to the particular firearm and hence we can link the evidence with an alleged firearm or the suspected firearm that whether this firearm has been used in the case or not okay so all the characteristics are divided into two main characteristics class characteristics and the individual characteristics so what are class characteristics the class characteristic can be defined as those characteristics which are common to a particular group of family or items let's say you have 0.32 caliber cartridge so 0.32 caliber cartridge is a class characteristic there can be many but if i say there are 0.32 caliber cartridge with different markings so these markings will be the individual characteristic another example you all are the students of bachelor's of forensic science first year so first year bachelor's of forensic science is a class characteristic and if i take a name of a particular student from that this becomes the individual characteristic and if there are two people with the same name again the name will be considered as a class characteristic but the surname will become individual characteristic so the characteristic which are common to a particular group of family of item so let's say about a particular firearm a, a glock pistol or a 0.22 caliber firearm so 0.22 caliber firearm is a class is a class characteristic but the imperfections inside the firearm in the barrel in the chamber or uh, during the manufacturing process which have been created those will become the individual characteristics so let us talk about the cartridge case uh, and bullet examination on the basis of the class and individual characteristics so you can see the class characteristics are marked as the breech face markings firing pin impression extractor ejector markings and on the bullet there will be groove marks or rifling marks okay so we are going to discuss all this in detail let us move ahead and see now what we do in forensic science we need to conduct the test firing what is test firing if you have the alleged firearm if you have the suspected firearm you need to test fire it to create the specimen bullets and cartridge cases that can be compared with the crime bullet and the crime cartridge cases so what we are going to do we are having a test firing box which is usually a 10 feet long and 3 feet wide and 3 feet in height and which is having certain compartments the tank is filled uh, with water maybe paraffin wax maybe cotton and then there is a hole where you need to place the barrel of the gun to test fire and you know you have to take all the precautions during the test fire maybe the alleged firearm is a country made firearm or maybe other type of firearm which is malfunctioning so it may create harm so you need to there is another procedure for taking the precautions that we will discuss later but right now we need to discuss we need to have the test fire cartridge case as well as the test fire bullet so once the firing is being done we can recover the bullet from the test firing box and then we can examine the bullets and the cartridge cases under the comparison microscope now here is the actual tool which is used in forensic ballistics so the comparison microscope compares the two specimens all together kept under two objectives left and right and the two objectives simultaneously and shows onto the screen or you can see through the ocular unit so a comparison microscope is a basic tool used by the forensic ballistic expert to identify the class and individual characteristics of the cartridge case as well as the projectile okay so let us see move uh, let us move ahead and see let's first talk about bullet comparison now you have encountered a bullet first of all i would like to say bullet is used in rifled bore cartridges or it can be used in country made weapons as well i told you the bullet projectile is used in rifled bore firearms so if it is a standard rifle bore firearm it is going to have the rifling marks the grooving 
because the grooving was inside the barrel and those groove marks have been created right now onto the onto the projectile now these grooving or these groove marks will serve as a mean of identification of the firearm whatever grooving marks were there whatever imperfections were there within the barrel of the gun it is going to create the same markings over the bullet or the projectile now these markings are direction of the rifling whether it is right rifling or left rifling number of lengths and groups how many groups are there two firearms of the same company of the same caliber can have the similar number of lengths and groups and these are class characteristics but still they are required now suppose if you have two firearms and from one firearm you have a uh, number of group 6 and other firearm is having number of group 7 on the test fire cartridge so you can easily uh, take out or rule out the presence of that firearm on the crime scene or in that particular crime because the grooving is different or any one thing will be different in any if any one thing is different if if you are using a firearm if the if the bullet encountered at the crime scene is having a right rifling or right grooving and the test fire cartridge the test fire bullet is having left grooving then there is no need to go further for the examination okay then comes the width of lens and groove depth of groove angle and pitch of rifling individual striation marks now here is the individual characteristics of the firearm let's go ahead and see now direction of rifling i told you right rifling and the left rifling okay so we can see the rifling marks over the bullet as you can see the rifling marks are going in right if the bullet is spinning in this direction clockwise direction so rifling marks are being created so we can count the number of these grooves groove marks so first is the number we can see the width of the groove marks we can see the depth of the groove marks we can see the twist right or left we can see that as well and hence we can identify uh, or uh, the suspected firearm whether it has been used in that particular case or not this is an example of measuring the width of the groove with the help of a uh, Either the vernier calipers can be used or uh, a screw gauge can be used. Okay, so and this is under the comparison microscope. This is the division of the two objectives of the comparison microscope. This is left uh, sample and right sample specimen under left objective lens and right objective lens. And we can see the markings are matching or not matching. In this way, we can see the width of the lens and groove then angle means when you create the grooving if you will see the previous diagram i'll show you once again if you will see there is a point where the grooving is completed and then again regrooving is started so from first grooving point to the returning grooving point it will be a angle or the pitch of rifling okay from first grooving to the second grooving here again another grooving will start so i have made the diagram like this to uh, to simplify it so you can see the distance between two successive grooving or grooves is the pitch of rifling and angle means at which angle from the breech and you look inside the barrel from which angle the rifling is being done okay next is the individual striation marks which is very much necessary now you have measured the number of lens and grooves, width of lens and groove, direction of rifling and if everything is same, you can go ahead with the individual characteristics, individual uh, characteristics of the projectile and you can see under the two objective lens of the comparison microscope whether they are meeting or matching with each other or not. Hence we can say that this is the same firearm which have been used on the particular crime scene okay now coming to the cartridge case examination you can you may find an empty cartridge case you may find a live cartridge case if there is a live cartridge case then there is mostly no use of these markings but if empty cartridge case is there you can see all these markings first is the identification number what is the identification number which is a class characteristic then the manufacturing mark weight diameter okay 
base design all these are the class characteristic then we have the color shape all this comes the class characteristic and the individual characteristics are breach phase markings firing pin marks chamber marks extractor marks and ejector mark now presence of these marking please listen carefully presence of these marking on the cartridge case is a class characteristic but the individual striations individuality of these marking will be considered as individual characteristics okay let us move ahead and understand this in much detail let first comes about the breach phase now breach phase is the uh, is that part of the action block of the firearm where the cartridge actually rest as you can see in the image there are many markings over the breach phase and this is the hole for the firing pin now after we press the trigger firing pin will come from this hole and will hit the percussion cap and the firing is initiated now this is when the firing is initiated there is the pressure which is high pressure which is generated and exerted on, on all the directions of the cartridge so hence the cartridge will tend to move towards the backward direction as well now this backward movement of the cartridge will create the breach face marking now these breach face markings will be individual to all the firearms no two firearms can create same breach phase markings and then we can see on the test fired cartridge and on the crime sample cartridge under the comparison microscope whether the breach phase markings are matching or not as you can see in these diagram in these images that whether the breach phase markings in the two cartridges are matching or not and same happens to the firing pin marks okay firing pin marks no two firing pins in two firearms can create the same markings okay there are many facts about firing pin marks which we will discuss in detail when we'll talk about the internal ballistics uh, session in detail okay so you can compare the firing pin marks also firing pin marks are present on the cartridge case not on the projectile not on the bullet okay then chamber mark as the pressure is exerted in all the direction so the surface body of the cartridge case hits the chamber of the firearm in the action block and whatever the markings are there in the chamber of the firearm they are get imprinted onto the surface body of the cartridge now once we see in the comparison microscope by keeping the two samples the crime sample and the specimen sample the control sample we can see whether the markings are similar or not hence we can identify whether the same uh, firearm have been used or not and then comes the extractor in manual firearms you have extractor and the marking created by the extractor okay you have seen the people extracting the cartridge case empty cartridge case from the firearm so that also create a particular marking at six o'clock position okay this we will discuss and the other marking is the ejector mark ejector marks are present in the automatic firearms okay so these markings are also will be very much individual in imperfections or in a strike so this was about the examination of the cartridges next we will be talking about the details in internal external and terminal ballistics till then thank you very much hope you have enjoyed the session